Yeah, yeah I think um, I think everybody's available except Peyton Watson okay. and Duran, obviously. Okay. Yeah. Just two or three? Yeah, it's a long yeah. list. I got a lot of things. Um, well, I have some comic relief before the game. Let's go story time. So I talked to our team this morning prior to shoot around about after four games, kind of where we stand uh, defensively. And I think we're 28th in preseason points per game allowed. We're probably 27th in three-point defense allowed. And then I got to uh, three-point makes allowed per game, and we're 31st. And so I said to Trey Alexander, I said, Trey, how many teams are in the NBA? He said, 32. I said, okay. I asked another player, I said, how many t teams are in the NBA? No, 32. I said, well, the reason I have it up there that we're 31st in most threes allowed per game is that there's only 30 teams in the league. So even the New Zealand Breakers are ahead of us in this category. Um, so the three-point defense, we're giving up almost 23s per game after four games. And then the one thing offensively, um, that is just jumping off the pages. We're giving up 27 points a night off our turnovers. Um, so, and they go hand in hand. You know, offense is the beginning of your defense and vice versa. So, you know, lots we can clean up. And, um, you know, we'll give our starting group a chance to play tonight, see how the game unfolds. They played last night in Chicago. So, I'm not sure who's going to play for them. But regardless of that, Katie, just an opportunity for us to um, try to play. Uh, the game the right way and much more consistently from quarter to quarter than we have in the first four games. How do you know when the starting group is ready? What does that look like to you? Uh, pace, execution, uh, attention to detail, the discipline. Uh, are we communicating? Uh, because you know when you've seen a team and a core group win a championship, you, you know what they're capable of and you know what their best looks like. And um, now, I thought in the first quarter against OKC, I thought our starting group did a lot of really good things. But in each of our four games, it's been, you know, obviously there's been a quarter or two quarters where it's just completely, we're talking about wheels falling off. Uh, so that, that's where tonight, let's see if we can put as close to a 48 minute effort um, to, to wrap up preseason as we get ready for our season opener. Yeah, kind of on that note, you've talked about wanting longer stretches of good habits out there. What's the key to that? Well, I, I think um, challenging yourself and then challenging the guy next to you um, to be disciplined and to do everything we, we we're trying to do with pace and purpose offensively. And then obviously defensively, just having a lot more game plan and personnel discipline. You know, there's just too many mistakes, same mistakes that are happening right now. And uh, so we need to show some growth, obviously. Um, there's no panic. This is preseason. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that there are definitely some concerns after four games. And tonight, you know, is, is a great opportunity to go out there and, and, and show some growth and improvement. Coach, with Russ, what have you seen so far from him? And ideally, how do you see him fitting in? And what does he help you with? going forward this season. Yeah, he's uh, he's been great and I, and I can't stress that enough, you know, uh, from the the energy he brings every day, um, from the leadership he brings every day, um, how hard he plays, how hard he practices. Um, you know, I, I I think this team needed a guy like Russell Westbrook. Uh, and the great thing about Russ, he comes in off the bench, he's going to play with great pace, get out in transition, look to attack. Uh, he can play behind Jamal. He can play with Jamal. Uh, he'll make everyone around him better. And uh, as great as he's been, I just don't want the rest of the group always relying upon Russell Westbrook, a 17-year vet, to be the guy that sets a tone every day. That should be Nicola. That should be Jamal. And um, you know, but I can't say enough positive things about Russell Westbrook uh, in in every way, shape, and form, and how he's impacted our group. Coach, we had uh, Dario Saric here with the Wolves for a couple of years, and uh, sometimes it's not the most um, tantalizing to the eye test. He's not flashy, and he's mm -hmm. a little more steady and controlled. And I'm wondering, um, in seeing what you've seen of him so far, does he look like that fits what you're trying to do with him and in that position, or do you need more of the – the pizzazz and jump and flash out of him? Yeah, no, I mean, um, couldn't agree more. There is uh, no disrespect to Dario. I'm sure his wife would disagree. But, 
he's not that sexy, flashy player. Um, but that's not who the Denver Nuggets have been in 10 years that I've been there. Um, more substance. And Dario, his IQ, um, his ability to play the four, the five, make people better. He's so much bigger and stronger than I think people, you know, um, it really, he's, he's just strong, big. He can score in the post. He can shoot the three. A very good playmaker. And when he's playing behind Nikola, we can play the same way with him as a five. And he can be a four who can post up mismatches. So um, getting to know him and everything that Dario is bringing to the table is exactly what we had envisioned when we signed him. A veteran player um, that's been around, knows how to play. And for us being a ball movement, body movement team, where we give our players freedom to play. You have to have players that know how to play to capitalize within that system, and Dario definitely does that. Yeah, the alarm's going off. That's, I, I like it. <laughs>